the Federal Corvette. The ship build tonight is going to be mining focused. And if I'm being honest, a lot of people probably don't look at the Federal Corvette and think mining ship, but it is low key one of the best mining ships in the game. It is, however, very difficult to acquire. Not only is the hull detractively expensive at 182.5 mil, you also can't buy it until you complete the Federal rank grind, which is as long and tedious as the Imperial rank grind. So this is a ship for late stage players who've hopefully completed these grinds and have enough of a credit balance they want to go after something pretty unique and very fun to fly. A lot of people aren't aware how niche the Federal Corvette's roles can actually be because it's not just the best mining ship in the game, it also has the highest passenger capacity in the game. But we'll cover that in a separate video. The core internals are laid out like this. Lightweight alloy, heavy duty grade 5 deep plating. 8A power plant, armored grade 2, but you've got the headroom again to go all the way up to grade 5 if you want to. I chose to stop here in the ship that I'm flying in game because it's intended for solo play, and this is all the headroom I needed to give it the power output required to run everything. 7A thrusters, dirty grade 5 drag drives. If you want to, you can just not engineer this at all. You do sacrifice top boost speed. If you uh, strip the engineering off, you boost to 270. And that's a, a little bit nasty. You definitely don't want to be flying a large ship in open play with a boost anywhere near 250, since that's the speed that a torpedo flies. So if you are planning to do this in open, you definitely want engineering on those thrusters. But if not, you can save yourself a ton of time and materials collection by just not engineering at all if you want. The frame shift drive, however, I highly encourage in, uh, engineering on. Increased range grade 5 and mass manager. If you happen to be sitting on a 6A Brewer frameshift drive and you don't have an anaconda to stick it in, this is a good place to stick it, although the difference that it makes is that of you know, two, maybe three light years. So it takes you from a fully laden jump range of 17 to, I wouldn't bet on more than 20. I mean, maybe if you found some places to shave weight, you could get it there, but as a mining ship, it just is, I don't know many mining ships that jump very far, we'll put it that way. You can make it happen if you really work hard on certain holes, but the sacrifices you have to make aren't always worth it. It depends on your play style. I haven't engineered the life support systems at all. You can choose to if you have a need. 8A power distributor. This was a, a build I threw together pretty quick. I was uh, trying to grind my way up to a fleet carrier before their initial launch, so I only put charge enhanced grade 2 on here because that's all you need to be able to perpetually run the four mining lasers that I have positioned in these hard points over here. You can go higher if you choose, um, but also keep in mind too that you don't necessarily have to perpetually run your uh, weapons in order to be effective in mining. Uh, this current, let me see if I, I got to go in here and shut these off. I'm going to show you something here that's kind of cool. A lot of people think you need to have your capacitor banked up so that it never runs out when you're mining and that somehow makes you more effective, but what you actually have to target for, if you give me one second here, let me sort these by type. And we'll disable the beam laser and the two multi cannons so that you can see what the offensive profiles look like. With four pips and weapons, you have a capacitor drain in two minutes, 20 seconds. This will strip even the largest asteroid to zero while laser mining in a lot less time than that, meaning that you can actually have a couple of pips in your engines to up your maneuverability. Uh, three pip balance gives you 26 seconds and, well, you know, however you want to do it. Um, I've found that you can basically strip an asteroid in, I think, 45 seconds. So, yeah, four pips is probably what you need. But you don't necessarily have to go for never. You just have to go for whatever is necessary to drain the asteroid in one shot. So whatever ship you're flying, however many hard points you're looking at, just keep that in mind and don't stress if you can't quite get it that high, especially if you're doing combat mining and you need to be able to have some headroom for other, uh, other hard points. It's not anything that you need to be too panicked over. It is a desirable trade if you can get it, but it's not something to break the bank trying to pursue. Uh, long range grade four sensors, they're what I'm running in the live game. You could easily make these five if you felt like it. I didn't quite feel the need. Uh, optional internals. Because the Federal Corvette's got a ton of size 7s in here, you only need to dedicate two cargo racks to give you 256 tons. In my gameplay experience, if you're looking for one thing, typically when I'm in this I'm looking for painite or low temperature diamonds, 
you can fill the entire cargo hold in roughly two hours of casual gameplay. If you get really aggressive with it and you're boosting around, you might be able to shave some time off of that. But I don't. I tend to just wander around looking for whatever I need, listening to my favorite podcasts, and it serves me okay. 7B Fuel Scoop, because I didn't really think a 7A was necessary given that it only takes you from zero point, or sorry, from a 29 second scoop time to a 25 second scoop time. And the difference on the budget is significant. If you look down here, the fuel scoop, the 7B is 22 mil. And if I were to go in here and A-rate it, uh, it goes all the way up to 91 mil. So B-rated to save some credits on the front end. And, you know, if you want to come back here and upgrade it later, you always can. 6C, Bioweave Shield Generator. Because this is a PvE ship and it's also a miner, I like the idea of having bioweaves because there's going to be a lot of tapping and bumping and ramming, and you know you might get into a fight with one or two PvE ships during the course of a mining operation. So the bioweave gives you plenty of recovery time, and it is the superior option for PvE engagements because it has more combat endurance. So long as you can get a break between engagements, bioweaves are the better option. The reason why they don't work in PvP is because you typically do not have engagement control and in those situations it's better to have raw shield capacity and then limp back to a station and charge yourself off of the docking pad if you really need to. Now, what I'm about to get into is going to be something that changes here with the upcoming, uh, what is it, update 9? where we're going to get hybrid limpet controllers and a universal limpet controller that will mean that each one of these controllers could potentially pull dual function. I don't know how this is going to affect all mining builds because of the specialization effect. They've already said the collector limpet controllers that are task specific will maintain high performance metrics. I'm curious to see how high the performance difference is going to be between the hybrid and specialized limpet controllers. But I wanted to make this video now anyway, because I wanted to have something in here to highlight the differences and how this will affect some of the larger tier builds, because these differences will also cascade down to the smaller ships. And the biggest thing that I'm looking at is potentially freeing up this size 4 optional, because the mining hybrid limpet controller is going to have the ability to, to create both collectors and prospectors, if I remember the live stream correctly. So I might potentially be going in here to replace one of these collector limpet controllers with its hybrid variant and then using this size 4 uh, that I have a prospector in for something else. I don't know what yet. And I, while I'm not sure what the performance differences are going to be, um, the mining meta is to run 5D collector limpet controllers. If you're unfamiliar with mining operations, this is because you don't want your limpets wandering off a couple of kilometers away to fetch some small abstract rock and then come back. It actually reduces your efficiency. You want your limpet controllers to stay close to your ship, to mine the chunks the lasers scrape off as quickly as possible, and for that to work you want to make sure that your limpets aren't going after abstract things. This is especially true if you're mining with a group because your limpets will start fighting with each other over the different rocks and it just creates a mess. 5D limpet controllers mean as long as you space yourself far enough away from each other that you're not going to be stepping on each other's toes as much. Now, for the military compartments in my solo mode build, you want to run a whole reinforcement package and a module reinforcement package just because they're cheap and available and it does get your absolute hole up higher. So if your shields pop, you have more time to get away. If I were going to make this into an open safe build, I would take this 6C shield generator, stick it in the seven slot, A rate it, and then reinforce it. And if I've got prismatics, that's probably the preferred platform I would use. And then cheese the engineering on these shield boosters for balanced resistances and as much absolute capacity as you can get, keeping those resistances in mind. Um, that's, uh, I digress actually on that one a little bit. There's going to be some, di there's different ways to do this. Um, you'll want to play around in here to figure out how you want to set your ship up, but this is a good starting point. Uh, you do need to have a lot of collector limpet controllers in order to keep up with the amount of material the mining lasers are going to be generating. Um, now, I could run a pulse modulator, whatever the pulse wave scanner is in here, but since we're not deep core mining, the prospector tells you everything that you need to know, and anything else that you stick in here is just, it's extras, and it's your call if you want it. You can turn this into a deep core miner, the maneuverability lends itself very well to that role. 
It does make it take longer to do laser scraping, which is you know your typical trade-off. But I've I've always just preferred to do it in in other smaller ships. Core mining requires you to be maneuvering around a lot, and the Federal Corvette's so big sometimes that you can't quite get it in where you need it to to get a good shot out. Especially after you crack an asteroid. Now let's see. Uh, oh. Uh, 3A Prospector Olympic Controller. You could potentially go smaller if you wanted to. I like having two prospectors available. One for the asteroid that I'm going to, and another that I fire off while I'm flying between asteroids so that I'm potentially searching for the next one. A 3A Refinery. A lot of asteroid miners I know prefer fours because you get more bins. The thing is, a lot of those same miners are only ever looking for one thing at a time, maybe two. Um, you're usually going after high-value uh, commodities that you can't get on the open market. So, painite, low-temperature diamonds, a couple of other rare ores, a couple of other minerals, things that you can't typically buy out in the open economy. And that means that you only ever really need, like, four bins, maybe five. I like to have the headroom as a preference, but because it's so cheap and easy to run a 3A. You could make it a four if you wanted to, but you don't... You don't really have to. I think I part of the reason I did this was because of power constraints in an earlier version of the build. Um, but more bin counts are only helpful when you're trying to mine a whole bunch of things all at once. So some like when I'm in my Type 9, for example, and I don't really care all that much, I'll go out into an open asteroid field, I'll remove all of the target restrictions on what I'm mining for, and I'll just collect everything that floats into my cargo bay. And in those situations, a 4A refinery really helps you with volume. But for precision, I mean, you could actually get away with a 1A refinery, which gives you four bins, which is enough headroom that you can be looking for what you need. Although it does mean you have to babysit your refinery a little bit more. If you happen to scoop a bunch of things that aren't on your target filter list, uh, your refinery won't automatically reject them. You'll have to come in and manually purge the incomplete bins. Um, you can resolve that by just messing with your target selection lists, but that does take a lot of time, and I know a lot of people who find it really frustrating. So... Um, to avoid that headache, they usually just run a larger refinery. It's up to you guys. Um, I, this is where I've settled. Um, this is where you've got a lot of creative freedom, though. And I do want to point out that you absolutely have to have a surface scanner in a mining ship because you can't identify the resources uh, in a planetary ring without them. Um, this is the way that you scan planetary rings to determine where your hotspots are. And since hotspots were added to the game, there's basically no reason why uh, you should be mining anywhere but inside a hotspot. Know what you're looking for, go into that hotspot, and start scooping up as much of that stuff as you can get. Hard point selection. Let me turn these back on real quick. The Federal Corvette is the only ship in the game that gives you two huge hard points. And they put out enough damage to carry their weight almost completely by themselves against PvE encounters. I've opted for every commander's bread and butter. I actually have a dedicated video about this hardpoint, the 4A multi-cannon. Now, in the huge hardpoint multi-cannons case, you want to be running rapid fire. That gives you a really good balance of damage output, and because the huge hardpoint fires so slowly... Um, it does perk it up and give you a tighter uh, projectile spread, so it makes it easier to put damage on target, but it does come at the cost of combat endurance. When I was playing with this ship, I found that if I got ambushed by a PvE Type 10 or Anaconda, that I would burn most of my available magazine trying to kill it. Uh, beam laser does help, that's why this 3C is in here, and it is gimbaled because this is under the nose, and you need to, having a little bit of curve gives you a little bit better time on target. So you do have balanced damage output against NPCs. The remaining hard points, two medium and two small, are mining lasers. If you happen to have a mining lance, you can slot it in here for a little bit extra range. That gives you a little bit less uh, effort maneuvering to try to get into position for mining. It speeds up the process a little bit, but in my opinion, the difference it makes isn't really worth the power play grind. So. I, if you really want a mining lance, I mean, you could probably go for it, but it'll take you a month. Otherwise, I recommend waiting for a community goal reward where it's on offer. I think there have been two so far that have offered the mining lance. If someone wants to correct me in the comments, please let me know. I do get these things wrong from time to time. Utility mounts. 
I've loaded this thing up with shield boosters. Again, you don't really need a pulse wave analyzer because this is a this build, as configured, is a laser mining build. It doesn't do any of the other types of mining, so a pulse wave analyzer is not necessary and won't affect your gameplay all that much. Shield boosters, however, will. I referenced that this build can be made open safe. This is where you turn it into a shield tank. As it stands right now, you're kind of more of a hull tank, but you know. Uh, your open safe threshold is at least 1,000 megajoules of shields or hull, although shields is preferable. I wouldn't recommend trying to do 1,000 1, megajoules of hull because if you expose your hull to a PVE, you're going to get yourself power planted before you can jump out unless you've spent a ton of time engineering reinforcing everything. So uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Oh, budget. 517 mil out the door as configured. This doesn't really reflect the amount of effort you're going to put into engineering. The hull is very expensive, 182 mil. So if you're tired on the budget, you might end up waiting until it comes on sale. I ended up purchasing the Federal Corvette hull that I used in this build while all of the Federal holes were discounted by like 25% or I think it might have actually been 30%. It was a, a community goal reward. So my rebuy actually ended up being less than this. I think it was closer to 20 mil. Um, but you should expect if you're building now at full price, no discounts, no access to Shinrar to Dejra, that it's going to cost you 517 mil with an insurance rebuy of 25.8, which is a significant chunk of change. But if you're mining in solo, this setup is going to get you out of most situations that PVE encounters will throw you. It will not, as configured, hold off a pvp -er for very long so if you insist on flying it at open play as configured you got to have your system pre-selected when you arrive at the community goal because you're probably going to get pulled over and there's a good chance you'll die before you can calculate your high wake so let's see um, power constraints are minimal um, if you are going to make this an open play build i really really recommend you come in here and armored grade 5 this and then double brace it uh, any ship that I'm flying in open play is armor grade 5 on the power plant, or it is shield tanked out the wazoo. If you have to pick between shield tank and hull tank for open play, I recommend shields because shields recover. Hull damage is forever in any encounter. Uh, let's see. And in that situation, again, I want to repeat this to emphasize, if you're going to make this open safe, you want a 7A prismatic shield. Um, on your engineering, you'll want to do, let's see, um, there's two different paths for PvP situations where you're going to be coming up against absolute damage. I tend to think reinforced is better, but it depends on if you're going for, you know, absolute capacity. Some people like to go for resistance tanks, and in that case, I would recommend thermal resistant to balance your initial resistances and then uh, start really working on things over here. Again, if you want extra details on how to set shields up, there is a new player tutorial on my channel for uh, setting up shields. It's all about how they work, where shield cell banks fit and everything, how to lay it out, and the considerations that you should have when you're planning a shield build. Uh, I think that's all I've got for today, so I will catch you guys later.